it's going to be kind of a fun video. Um, uh, hey, this is Mike Colleen at MikeColleen.com, M-I-K-E-K-O-L-L-I-N.com, and this is going to be kind of a lighter, fun video. I think I've been trying to lighten them up, man, because there's, like I said, there's good news here, and there is a celebration phase to this whole thing. Uh, I know narcissists can be a uh, terrifying experience, for sure. I know I've been through it my whole life, uh, but I popped. It's fun. I'm out of it. <laughs> That's kind of the point of the, all this video series, as you'll notice, is there's a way out of this haunted house, okay? It's kind of funny because it's Halloween season. We're at the 20th today. It's coming up in about 11 days. So let me let me pull something up here. So Okay, so I saw the title of a video, and I was listening to it, and it was just like, what not to do? When you discover uh, they're a narcissist or something like that, and I, and I was a monster. Oh my god, I fucked up. I did all those things, <laughs> and so I actually made a note. Uh, I typed it in there and I copied it. Uh, did a video image of it. So I said, "Oopsie," because I did exactly that. I literally was like, "You should, you should be a Hollywood actor." Them? Why? I said, "Because you're so fake. Everything about you is all. now, mind you. Okay, this okay. This is a true story. This is not bullshit." I didn't quite understand like I do now. Like I mean, yeah, I heard a narcissist. I read some books, saw some videos years ago, and saw some more two years ago. And you know, I get narcissist fucking dicks, whatever you know. But I didn't really see him like I do now, and I didn't quite fucking get it. Okay, and that's and I didn't see them as like now I can see him because like it's because I popped. When you pop, you're like, bing bing. You can see him, right? Even as you look back in your past, you're like. Oh, no wonder that guy was a dick to me all those years. He was a fucking narcissist or that girl, my ex-girlfriend, you know. So, anyways, I didn't know all this shit. I was watch this. So, this video is like, don't do these things. I'm like, oh, fuck, I did all of those. So, I think it's kind of comic, com comedic. So, I said, oopsie, because I did exactly that. I literally was like, you should be a Hollywood actor. Them, why? I said, because you're so fake. <laughs> Everything about you is a lie. It's like you're wearing a mask. He said this. He said, it's like you're wearing a mask. And I started laughing because <laughs> on the street, we were walking down the street, going to, from one place to another. I literally said this, and I'm laughing at it. We were, I remember exactly we were crossing the street through the crosswalk. And I started laughing because at this point, they'd been so rude to me and so fake and lied about everything. I was, I'm reading it right now. I was just sick of it. Did I mention I didn't realize yet they were a narcissist? <laughs> and so I just didn't care. I, um, I was at the point of I had taken enough abuse for so long. I'd been kind in return the entire time. So I figured I would throw it back to see how they like it. And that's really where I was at. Like, well, fine. Let's see how they fucking like it. And um, at one point I even said, well, what's wrong with you? You have serious. And I literally said to them, like, you've got serious issues. I swear I had no idea uh, what or who I was messing with. I just continued to call them on their shit. I was just so sick and tired of getting uh, knocked around. It was, it was fucking, it, you know, it's, I mean, if you've dealt with narcissism, you know, but it's fucking weird. It's like, you know, here you are being nice to this person, you're being supportive, and they're looking for opportunities to, you know, knock you down and poke you where your weaknesses are. And you're just going, what the fuck, what the fuck's going on here, you know? And that's typical of what it's like dealing with a fucking narcissist. So I said, I swear I had no doubt and I, who, what I was messing with, and I just continued to call them on their shit. I was just so sick and tired of getting knocked around. Then I saw it a day or two later, and this, 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 this did scare me. I swear to God, it was like, it was like an empty shell behind a face mask. It scared the living shit out of me. It felt demonic. It was at this point I realized I need to get the fuck. Why well, I say I need to get out of Dodge? Yep, total narcissist. So. That is a phase you'll go through. When you see it, it'll scare the fuck up. Whoa, what the fuck was that? Kid? Whoa, like, like, almost, okay. I'm just, uh, I'll say it in two ways. It's like on the one hand, like, oh, this is who they are, right? And then their mask kind of slips aside, and you're like, who the fuck is that? <laughs> it's like a totally different person. What the fuck's going on here? Even on that level, it freaks you out. But for me... <laughs> It was more like I, it, it's like, I don't know how to explain it. It was like there was nothing inside. <laughs> I'm not joking. And it fucking freaked me. They felt that, like, I felt like a demonic, like there's darkness. That's, it was darkness and it felt demonic. So you're going to go through a stage of, of absolute fucking fear and it'll freak you out for about a month or so. And then you're going to start, like, your brain kind of, amalgamates and starts like reflecting over all the things they said and did and like, that was a lie that was a lie that was a fucking well, those motherfuckers are fake as fuck and then you go through a fucking anger stage <laughs> and you're fucking angry at them and you just want to kick their fucking ass or get revenge right and 
then what happens is you realize how pathetic they are. And you know, I'm, I'm not saying this to be mean. I swear to God, I don't sound like, but I'm not. You realize how much it, 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 it becomes a letdown. Like, because you're like, fuck, you thought they were this giant fucking monster. And then you're like, they're this little fucking gnat. And you're like, what the fuck was I afraid of them for? And then you get embarrassed. <laughs> you get a little ashamed, like, fuck. How they like that fucker jerk me around all that fucking, Jesus fucking, they were fucking me over and jerking me around and stabbed me in the back and you know, it's all the shit. And then, and then you laugh. You, you go through a laughter stage. And I think it's partly because you see them for what they are. They're just this pathetic, you know, I'm sorry. Um, it's, it, it's almost like they're a disappointment. That's the best way I can explain it. Like, because you thought they're just, Rawr! and it turned out they're like, so, this little peep squeak. You know, I'm not trying to be mean. I don't, I, I, I don't honestly, you, if, you, if you finally pop, you're going to laugh when you see it. And so I think there's a celebration after that where you start to laugh for weeks because you have all these memories of, of this person in the past and this person. And you're like, oh, my God. Because you're afraid of all these people, even if you haven't seen them in 15, 20 years since you were a child when they were abusing you. And then you see, like, they're more afraid of me than I am them. I'm the one with the power. That, that, that part's going to blow your mind. That's going to blow your fucking mind. I swear to God, you're going to be like, because that's what happens. You get this resolve. And you're, and you're like fucking, you're like a, like a goddamn fucking soldier with fucking armor on and a fucking big ass fucking sword, man. You just, your boundaries go up. All right. And you have this sense of fucking resolve. Like I'm never, ever putting up with this bullshit. And you know, this is another gift. Should have put in the last thing, but if you've been following the series, you'll get it. Not only do you not put up with any of their shit ever fucking again, you don't put up with anyone's shit. You know? You just, no, I'm done. The minute they do it, you call them on it, you cut them out of your life, you block them on your phone. You don't got any time for that. All right? Let me tell you something. There's a lot of people out there that are, they're not spiritual, or they're these fake, or even some empaths who, who, who don't have resolve yet. Well, you got, it's all about being nice. No, no, no. I've got books up there calling, calling it spiritual warfare, spirit, the battle of the spirit, all kinds of, no, no, no. You've got to become tough. You've got to get a sense of fucking resolve. And there does come a level of clarity, but there's also a level of strength. And sometimes you've got to kick ass. you got to put it in their face. You got, I'm trying to think of some, some really good famous people that have, that have like that, like, yeah, Deepak Chopra, I don't know if he's one of them, but people like that who said it's a spiritual battle. It is a battle. And my pastor used to say it all the time. It's like, oh, okay, it's a spiritual battle. I didn't get it. It is fucking like, there's a book up there called The Something Warrior. Hold on, let me see if I can, give me, give me one second. Hold on. I want to, I want to see it was Dan Millman's book. Um, let me, let me just Google it real quick. I'll, I'll delete all this stuff. Yeah, it's Dan Millman. He wrote a book called A Peaceful Warrior, called Peaceful Warrior. First time I heard I was in Hawaii at a five-week NLP and Ericksonian hypnosis training, and they're also teaching us um, timeline therapy and HUNA, energy healing. And um, I remember the first time they called, oh, Dan Millman's book, The Peaceful Warrior. I'm like, oh, God, because back then I was, at, I think at the time I was ranked number one in the nation in kickboxing. <laughs> I was a tough dude. And... Um, I just thought, oh, the peaceful warrior. Man, when you go down the spiritual path, it is a fucking battle. So the reason why I'm saying this is because someone actually said this on my Facebook page. Oh, I thought if you, oh, you light workers are light workers, then why are you being so mean? Because it's a battle and we're under attack right now. And I know a lot of you watching this video series, you're, you've been going through it and it's fucking hell and you're getting attacked and you need to stand up for yourself. That is part of being spiritual. Okay. So I, I literally unfriended her. God, I love her. I love her to death. She's a sweet lady, but she just, she's one of those, you just got to be positive all the time. Even though you got, you know, I got a fucking sword through my heart. Hey, it's okay. I'll pull it out. Oh, don't worry. I'll heal it myself. And hey, can I give you some money for stabbing me? Can I give you some flowers? It's like, really? Here, dude, here's why I'm saying this is because this thing, when I popped, like, I fucking get it. Like, people used to go, dude, you're a bleeding. People have been telling me since middle school and high school, dude, you're a bleeding heart. You're a sucker. And, and they weren't complimenting me. But I took it as, oh, yeah, I'm nice. 
No, dude, you're getting your fucking ass waxed. You get knocked around the ring, bro. You're not even standing up. People say, Mike, you got to stand up for yourself. But you know what? A lot of you empaths out there think, oh, I don't want to be mean. That's not being mean. If someone's attacking you, protecting yourself is kind. You're being kind to your inner spirit. And that's something that you're not aware of yet because you haven't connected to your inner spirit. There's a little being inside you. And it's sensitive as fuck. It's literally like a 12-month-old infant, a fucking child that's sensitive as fuck. And you're letting these people knock the shit out of that. Your job is to protect your child. And until you understand that concept, you're going to get your ass kicked. And you're not going to be a supernova or a super empath or whatever the fuck you want to call it. I am telling you, you're in spiritual warfare. You need to stand up. You need to fucking speak out and you need to protect yourself and you need to have boundaries. Go back and watch the video on boundaries, okay? Made one or two. God bless you guys. Be strong, but also be loving. I don't mean be weak loving. I mean, come from strength. Come from like this barrier in, in the sense of in, like it, the sense of strength in love. That's the best way I can explain it. There is a wall up, but you're, you're still very open. You're especially open to yourself. That's probably the most important thing. That's another subject. I don't want this video any longer. Hey, God bless you guys. I love you.